So the Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu was this evening um, uh, uh, charged with corruption-related offences. But just who is Justice Mwilu and how was her near two-year stint at the Supreme Court been? We'll be giving you that story shortly. But first, this is not the only high-profile case that has been prosecuted by the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nodin Haji, since he took office a few months back. The latest, the highest level yet, Philomena Mwilu, who is being charged with abuse of office is theft and a failure to pay taxes. We also have Lilian Omolo, the uh, Principal Secretary of Youth Affairs, who had to step aside after the NYS 2 9 billion shilling scandal. She has been charged with abuse of office conspiracy to defraud NYS and he, uh, her co-accused uh, Richard Ndubai, also NYS Director General, former of course, uh, charged with conspiracy to defraud NYS 28 million shillings, abuse of office and uh, other charges they had to spend about a week in jail over this before they were granted bail. Ivan Skidero, former Nairobi County governor, in a 213 million shilling scandal, he was charged with fraud and abuse of office. That case is still ongoing, but he was freed on bail. We also have Sospita Ojamong, the governor for the county of Busia, with an 8 million shilling tender scam, charged with abuse of office and conspiracy to commit economic crime. Daniel Waidaka, the former Nyandarua governor, um, uh, in a 50 million shilling procurement scandal, charged with failure to comply with procurement laws, abuse of office, as well as engaging in a project without proper planning and funds, and abuse of office, of course. We also have the National Lands Commission, um, who has been embroiled in a 222 million shilling scandal. He was charged with abuse of office and breach of trust, and his co-accused is Atanas Minor, the MD for Kenya Railways, in that 222 million shilling land compensation scandal, of course, as well, charged with abuse of office and breach of trust. Ken Tarus, the former CEO of Kenya Power, um, charged together with his predecessor, Ben Chumo, um, uh, they were both charged with conspiracy to commit economic crime and abuse of office. This, of course, surrounds the case on supplying illegal tenders and, of course, uh, the acquisition, illegal acquisition of transformers as well. And finally, we have Charles Nguai, the managing director of KEBS, who was charged with conspiracy to defraud, aiding the commission of a felony and breach of trust. This is after... It emerged that uh, he allegedly allowed for substandard about 2.8 million bags of substandard fertilizer into the country while in office. This is some of the high profile prosecutions that have been made so far by the um, Director of Public Prosecutions, Nodin Haji, since he came into office. And the latest. DCJ Philomena Mwilu being the highest ranking um, or the highest profile case yet. So the Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu was this evening charged with corruption related offenses, but just who is Justice Mwilu and how was her near two year stint at the Supreme Court been? Her arrest and prosecution is now creating the impression that the position of Deputy Chief Justice is jinxed. But is it? Murimi Mwangi interrogate. As Philomena Mbete Mwilu faced the Margaret Kobia Chair Judicial Service Commission panel in October 2016, a laid-back demeanor, liberal mindset and a judicial career spanning over three decades stood out for the then appellate court judge who would ascend to the judiciary's second-in-command. I have done whatever was my duty to the best of my ability. I intend to continue doing that. And Mwilu's first test eventually came the Raila Odinga 2017 presidential poll petition, culminating in the September 1st Supreme Court nullification of President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election, the first such verdict in Africa and only the fourth in the world. Mwilu, alongside her boss David Maraga and Justices Smokin Wanjala and Isaac Lenaola, were on the side of history in the 4-2 judges' verdict. Hey! that instantly put the Kenyatta administration and the Kenyan judiciary on a collision path. Maraga na watu yake yao akora hao wamesema ati basi hiyo uchaguzi ipotee. Sindivyo wamesema? Sasa mimi sana sio rais mtarajiwa. Mimi ni rais ambao amekalia kiti. Tukimaliza na uchaguzi hawa watu tuta deal na wao. The issue that we've brought about revisiting we are an independent institution. 
and we are not going or are not being directed by anyone or by any statements given out there. On the evening of October the 24th, only two days to the repeat presidential poll, occasioned by the Supreme Court verdict, gangsters shot Mwilu's bodyguard along Gong Road. <laughs> That was only a night before a critical ruling at the Supreme Court in a case filed by activists Halef Halifa and Njonjo Mue to postpone the repeat poll. Mwilu skipped the court session alongside her five fellow judges, forcing the two judge bench of Maraga and Lenaola to adjourn the matter for lack of quorum. Mwilu, Maraga, Lenaola and Wanjala's tribulations would subsequently shift to removal petitions two at the Judicial Service Commission and one at the National Assembly on Integrity Queries relating to the acrimonious 2017 polls. But Mwilu's arrest and subsequent prosecution for corruption lifts the veil on what appears like the jinxed seat of Deputy Chief Justice. Mwilu's predecessor Justice Kalpana Rawal vacated the hot seat after a protracted legal battle that split the retired Chief Justice Willy Mutunga Supreme Court bench down the middle. Mutunga's first deputy, Nancy Baraza, vacated the job in the heat of temperament queries for pinching the nose of a security guard at the village market. Kenani Maraga. Maraga is 67 years old and is expected to retire in three years, in line with the 2010 Constitution's prescribed retirement age of judges at 70. And as Mwilu battles the corruption charges, a fierce succession battle, it appears, is yet again looming at the Supreme Court. Murumi Mwangi, KTN News.